After the fall of Saigon in 1975, more than a million desperate people fled Vietnam, many of them in small boats. The refugees were called boat people. Now a successful attorney, Vietnamese immigrant Lauren Vuong was one of them. She has accomplished so much in the four decades since then. But one goal remained elusive, finding and thanking the men who rescued her at sea. Don Daler has the story from Maritime College. What made you want to take this journey to begin with, to try to find these people? At every big juncture in my life, you know, graduation, law school, taking the oath, having children, seeing my parents, I, in the back of my head, I would always think, you know, I have to find these, I have to find these men. Lauren Vung carried that passion for decades to express her gratitude to those who saved her life. My very courageous, fearless mother, Mai. <laughs> and she wasn't alone. I would ask my mom periodically, do you ever think about them? And she would say, every time I have something good to eat, I think of them. Wow. When we first arrived in America, my first thought was, uh, how could I find the people who saved us. All these years later, and it's still that important to you. That's my dream. Vung never gave up her mother's dream. Her parents, upper-class landowners in the South, faced terrible persecution once the victorious North Vietnamese took control. Under communist rule, Vung's father was taken to a Viet Cong re-education camp. When we saw our husband, you know, working and with the, like a one bowl of rice a day, and there's no, that's when I thought, we got to get out. I have to get him out. You were afraid he would die? For sure, 100%. And that led to a daring decision to get her entire family to flee the country. Along with dozens of other families, they crammed onto a small fishing vessel and set out to the open sea. Vung was only seven years old. I remember just throwing up, just throwing up so much that I didn't think there was anything left to throw up. And there was nowhere to go to the bathroom. If you had to go, you just go. So you're living in all of that? You're living in that. For how long? We were on, at sea for 10 days. Did you think you were going to die? Yes. Yes. I don't know that a seven-year-old really knows what death is but I didn't see how we could keep, keep doing and feeling the things that we were feeling and continue. But somehow they endured. About 120 ships were on the same route, but never slowed. Then on June 29, 1980, they watched with awe as one paused and approached a liquefied natural gas tanker called the Virgo. There was uh, the smell of all kinds of things uh, in the boat. Dan Hansen and Ken Nelson were the first two men Vung remembers seeing. I believe I threw my shoes and stuff over the side when we came back up aboard the main deck because the conditions were that bad. There was no way that we were going to let those people go away on that boat. That would have been likely condemning them to death. Well, the two men came on board, and then next thing I know, my mom was laughing, she was crying, she, all at the same time, and she says to me, we're going to live, we're going to live. You saved your family at that point. <laughs> you, knew, you knew your family was gonna be okay. Yes. The rescue meant not just survival, but set Vung's family on a path full of promise here in America. 27 years ago, Lauren began her journey to find these men. She researched maritime registries, scoured the internet, which led to conversations with officers, photographs, and eventually an emotional reunion. Hello, how are you? This was the first time they'd seen each other in 37 years. It was your words to the captain that saved us. Dan stood on the gangway and Ken stood on our boat and they had to lift each child time the swells and then hand the child over. And so I, I said to them that I was delivered by you that day. <laughs> <laughs> like a baby. Yes, it was incredible. 
I, I still feel like this is all a dream. Voom got to share that special day with her parents, siblings, husband, and children. Do you feel more American or do you still feel Vietnamese? Or is there in you no distinction? This is who you are. I'll never not be Vietnamese because that's my heritage. I can't help being American because it's my country. And when I see that hyphen, Vietnamese American, I don't see it as a dividing factor. I see it as a bridge. That hyphen is a bridge of where I was, who I was, with who I am now and where I am today. A bridge that owes its existence to a boat and its crew who did the most American of things, embracing the huddled masses yearning to be free. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Don Daler, New York. Wow, what a story. I mean, the beacon of America shines so brightly in the minds of immigrants mm -hmm. who have, I mean, my family has a story like that. So countless numbers of families have stories of I, America I love, really welcoming them to their shores. I love what Lauren's mother said. Every time I have something good to eat, I think of them. Yeah. I mean, what a statement. Beautiful story. Yeah.